Hello, this is Jason, and I'm at the Bass Music Hall, Bass Concert Hall. And uh, yeah, down here for an event for uh, the company I work for, which I won't say sponsors a racing team that's in the F1 race. You might be able to figure out the company I work for just based on the sponsors. <laughs> it's kind of subtle though. I won't give you any clues. But I think they're going to have the uh, F1 racers here. And cool cars. What car is this? Yes, it says so right there. McLaren. McLaren. Nice. I could. <laughs> so yeah, the, the company I work for, which will not be named, the uh, sponsor of the McLaren racing team. I'll let you take a few guesses. It's one of it's one of the sponsors. It's written on this car. I'll give you that much of a clue. <laughs> Here we are. McLaren Formula One team. Pretty cool. So. Three hundred twenty-four thousand for that car. Up to three ninety-five. Wow. And then what's this one? <laughs> yeah. In the same ballpark. Right. It's the same car. Got two of them. Yeah. Very nice. As much brakes as you have on your whole car. Pretty cool. So I think there's going to be. I was expecting more food trucks. <laughs> this is where. Yeah, lunch with snow cones and got some tacos and some pizza. So there's going to be some more stuff inside. I don't think it opens up for another half hour or so, so pick you guys up in a little bit. Uh, here's the Alienware Center. They got some Fortnite set up. We got some uh, League of Legends playing up here, tournament. Pretty cool. This is all set up in like a little trailer. I don't think I'm going to be playing any Fortnite. That's a beast of a laptop. Alright, here we go. We've been waiting out here for a while. Front row. We got a little cheerleader entrance. Yeah, you have our tickets? Yeah, four of us do. No, it's just me. These guys are. If you go through there, 
Right? They just look at it. Just make sure you have a, yeah. have a QR code. As long as you have a QR code, you're good to go. <laughs> the AI art. Yeah. Okay. So we're just queuing up here. Dark. Can you get the vestibule blues at four million? How do they get a car on stage like that? I just wanted to see that. Where are we going? Yeah, no, sit in that one. Those are reserved. Uh, down here? Like Michelle. We got six down for. We got six still? We got six. We only have five because I don't know what happened. Oh, we got another guy here. Yeah, we have two more. This place is filling up. Look at all the people. Fill the whole place up. And soon. Start pretty soon. Please welcome Courtney Hughes. Don't worry if you haven't, okay? They'll be open for a short time after the show today. We have such a great show lined up. You're going to hear from McLaren Racing CMO Lou McEwen, UT's Austin Executive Senior Associate Athletic Director. Come on now, we in the SEC. Y'all might as well go ahead and give it up for Drew Martin. helping them push the off. Then, back by a very popular man, Liz is going to have a conversation with CEO Zach Brown and the Formula One drivers, Lando Norris and Oscar
Yeah, I mean, like many industries, the sports community has seen digital transformations taking shape in the multitude of ways, right? From cutting edge technology such as AI, and data, and analytics are all transforming and innovating the industry. So, Lou, I would like to start with you. You know, McLaren is always, always at the cutting edge of their technology. How is the Dell Technologies tech stack behind the scenes on race well, you know, you say it's behind the scenes, but it's actually absolutely at the heart of our racing operations. We sometimes say you can't really go a metre or a millisecond without coming across it in some form or other. As a race team, we absolutely love data. It informs everything we do on track. It defines our strategy. It helps us push to the, push to the front and really give us that competitive edge. If you consider across a race weekend, we have 1.5 terabytes of data coming off 300 sensors across our car. And then we're having to run 5 million race simulations to try and predict what might happen, right? So it's using technologies like AI Factory, which can help us get ahead in that, help us get ahead in our processes, and number crunch that data to really fast forward and accelerate us on track. Yeah, so Lou, do you think AI can also supercharge the fan experience, and is this something that you are looking at? So yeah, I mean, as in my role, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer um, here at McLaren, and my job is to grow the brand. And our fans are absolutely central to that. We need to stay connected with them every single day. Um, and so, so technology is really helping us play a key role in how we engage with them. And so, Drew, how do you see AI transforming the fan engagement in the next few years, right? And what role do you think it will play in shaping future marketing strategies? Well, I think it's going to play a tremendous role. So, a lot of the core of my job in external affairs is really this fan engagement idea, right? We're, we're blessed with athletics director at UT, Crystal Conte, who firmly believes that while we cannot control what happens on and off the field, right? Mm -hmm. We can absolutely control the fan experience, and that starts with the fan engagement. And AI is really changing the game. Um, whether you're starting with the revenue generation aspect of it and our ticket sales and services team, we're looking right now to implement a lot of AI strategies that can, that can develop relationships and, and frankly authentic relationships with our current customer base, whether it's inbound calls, with uh, any of the questions that they have around ticket purchasing, around game day, or things like that. How do we how do we cleverly integrate AI into our strategy to help us triage a lot of this before ever handing that and making that warm handoff uh, to our, our, our uh, human resource there. Um, but also in, in prospecting, mean, I see a future with AI where it can help us develop, based on what our goals and strategies are and, and, and how the game is going to plan out, of developing these, these real integrated uh, prospecting all of our uh, future customers and, and really deliver us uh, a much more robust experience for them. Yeah. And so, Lou, I mean, how have the advancements in technology influenced your strategies for engaging with fans and building your brand? And what are some key branding strategies that have been successful? So let me give you a little bit of context before I answer that. Uh, right now, Formula One is the fastest growing annual sports series on the planet. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty mega time to be in the sport. Um, there are 732 million global fans of Formula One. And of that, we've got 500 million of them. 500 yeah. million say that they're a Formula One fan. I think it's a little bit different from football. Because <laughs> Formula One fans sometimes follow a few teams. I'm going cool with that, we don't mind. Um, but because of that, uh, we've seen this incredible surge of growth over the last couple of years. Uh, Drive to Survive, a few of you watched it here, I'm sure. Um, and so because of that, we've got this enormous opportunity in front of us to embrace those new fans, but it also presents us with a bit of a challenge. So let me unpack that a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Gina. She's a 15-year-old fan that lives here in Austin, right? She's a relatively new fan to Formula One. She watched Drive to Survive. She loves Lando and she loves Oscar. She doesn't always watch all the races, but she loves all the off-track action and she loves the storytelling about the sport. There's probably a couple of genies here, right? I'm pretty sure, okay, that resonates with some of you. 
But over here in London, it doesn't have to be London, but I'm just going to pick London, it's home for me, is Matt. He's a 55-year-old. Uh, he's followed McLaren all of his life, and he sits down in front of the TV on a Sunday afternoon with his family, and he watches 90 minutes of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. And he loves it. And we love Matt and we love Gina. They're both really important to us. But the point here is that they want to consume Formula One in completely different ways. Um, and we've got to adapt to that in order to embrace them. And we've got to take our brand and sport to them because everyone has busy lives, right? So I think it's really the power of technology that enables us to listen in to Gina and Matt, understand what their drivers and fandom are, what they like, and then us make sure we can deliver what they want when they want. So we're able to listen in and find out that Gina likes her updates to come through before she goes to school, whereas Matt prefers his updates at lunchtime. Um, and equally, Matt, Matt's on Twitter, Matt's on X, but Gina's on TikTok. Um, and you know, those forms of content are a little bit different. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, recently, UT Austin's broadcast studio officially launched which is also powered by Dell. Can you share with us a little bit more about how you structure the operations and technology used to create a more optimal fitness experience? Sure, this is something extremely exciting. I'm very excited about this new venture with Texas Studios powered by Dell Technologies. This, uh, if you think about the history of Texas Athletics, we were, we were blessed with one more network where ESPN came in and produced all of our games for us. In joining the SEC, that almost falls on the universities. Each of the 16 universities has to produce their own live linear or digital broadcasts originating from the menus. And so we uh, made a conscious decision to adhere to the university's mission of what starts here changes the world. How do we develop a best in class brain studio powered by Dell that can empower our students to come in and, and learn in the classroom prop up a minor degree conferring program of Moody College Communication and give them real world opportunities to not just learn in classroom, but to actually produce all of these shows for all of the SEC network. On top of that, we integrated every one of our venues, like I mentioned before, into this one studio in Darrow K. Royal that powers all the video boards. And so our students are not just learning how to engage fans in the venue through video, they're learning how to produce live television content that goes out to the entire world. We layered on top of that the ability for them to leverage that content, then take it, recreate, whether it's shorts, whether it is series, whether it's a, a you know, documentary that gets produced on a spun out new uh, technology platform we, we did brand the global network to the brand equity behind that, but that's a global digital platform where to lose point, our fans that want to consume the content in different ways, it's a video demand and a live streaming platform, but we're delivering with Dell's help this amazing educational opportunity for our students to come in, learn, do, walk right across that stage, invite them to any production studio in the world, and go right to work. You've mentioned numerous times that you're working and I absolutely have to agree with you that this is a really exciting year for the team. You moved to the SEC, like what are you doing to make sure that the brain experience that people have come to love and expect from your team stays the same or gets better? Well, we never want to stay the same. If we're staying the same, we're getting better. So, so we always push ourselves to get better. So I think the keys to that are knowing who we are, knowing who we are, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to elevate that experience. Um, and how do we do that? We did just install all new video boards in, in DKR. We continue to enhance the game day experience with all the activities around. We engage with the Austin base and the Austin brand promises that, that they deliver to uh, visitors to our community, whether that's street festivals with your Bebo Boulevard, whether that's hook them hang out with your food trucks and, and craft beers, whether that's what wants to limit to live music or smoke midway with the state fair. But one of the exciting things that we're also doing to enhance it is, again, going back to AI and, and our technology, it's in our broadcast in the venue of using AI to do a lot of research. So real time, we're able to uh, use AI to watch the football game and deliver immediate insights into the game that we can deliver, whether that's on a broadcast or whether that's on some of the displays in the game, to really enhance that yeah. experience to understand 
if Quinn Ewers just, just had a 98-yard touchdown pass, well, where did that rank in the all-time rankings in the history to really provide that in-depth analysis for that football fan that wants to drill deep or that casual fan that just wants to know that something really, really big just happened and give context to it? <laughs> Absolutely agree. So, Lou, you know, this year we've seen some really amazing wins from the McLaren team to date. And how is the fan base supporting the team as you fight for the Constructor Championship? So they're showing up at yeah, the Constructors' Championship. I know! Just to give you a box. Um, but all to play for, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, our fans are showing up in more places than ever before. Um, there is more papaya. I, it's pretty It's pretty dark. I can't quite see because the lights are down, but I can see pops of papaya through the audience. And as a marketeer, uh, that makes me so, so happy that you're all supporting us, so thank you very much. Uh, and this year, they've showed up. It's been so exciting to see everyone get behind the team, actually, um, whether that's through our social media platforms. They've grown at the fastest rate this year. We're the fastest sports team growing on TikTok. Uh, we've had more engagements, more video views uh, than ever before, and that makes me really, really Excited. Uh, and actually, you know, going back to AI and, and technology, with all this happening, with all these different fans to serve, if I can use technology to help me and my team do all the heavy lifting, then it actually means we can be more creative. We can come up with greater stuff to engage our fans. And I can focus on winning the hearts and minds of, of everyone. So, <laughs> you all give it up for Drew and Please welcome back Liz Matthews with McLaren Racing Chief Executive Officer, Zach Brown. It's always awesome to be here 
you've heard me say it a thousand times, it's our favorite partnership. And uh, you've been with us from kind of day one on our quest to get back to fighting for the world championship. And here we are, hopefully we'll continue to kick everyone's ass. Yeah! yeah. question to both drivers. So I'm going to start with Oscar. What did it feel like to win your first Grand Prix? Uh, it was a very, very special moment. Uh, you know, I think for all of us on the grid, we kind of dream of that moment since we were a little kid. You know, it's the reason we get into racing, uh, trying to make it to F1 and trying to stand on the top step. So it was a very, very special day. Um, and um, yeah, very proud to say that it's the uh, first of two at the moment. First of two. But, uh, but a very, very special moment in my career, for sure. And seven podiums? Seven, seven podiums, but uh, the two on the top step definitely feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Amanda, what did it feel like to win your first Grand Prix? Felt uh, very similar, yeah, I guess. Um, thing is, Oscar came in and did it in two years, and I had to wait six years to, <laughs> to do mine. So it's taken a little bit longer, um, but the year's been incredible. Uh, we didn't start off with where we are now, you know. So that kind of little journey to go from fourth best team at the start of the year to now being the best team in Formula One um, is a it's a very cool thing to say, but to, to do it with, in, in the way that we've done it and to, to get my first win out the, uh, out the way, uh, especially Miami, it was a pretty, uh, as much as I would have loved to have done it here, so, uh, Miami was a pretty uh, cool way to do, uh, to do it, and um, I had a wonderful line. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask you, I was like, how do you celebrate that first win in Miami, or can you tell us? <coughs> oh, I just... I just, I just went out and uh, was with my friends, we had a great time. Um, I didn't sleep and uh, we played a, we played a booster on Monday, Monday afternoon and I've never felt so bad <laughs> on the key box. It's such a bad uh, hangover in my life. So. Um, but it was wonderful and uh, similar for Oscar, you know, we've had, we've had a great year. Um, but one's never enough. We get greedy and we always want more, so i um, happy to go on in and get a couple more since then. But we're doing a great job as a team, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. It has been incredible. I'm, I'm two and I'm done. Oh, no. uh, first of all, they burnt. <laughs> and I, I, I was there, but I got a second one. He was in such a worse. Complaining the whole time. I don't like, I don't like needles. And um, and then with with Oscar, I said I'd get a mohawk, but we didn't clarify whether it was a real mohawk. So yeah. we came into the garage with a uh, oh. mohawk, exactly. Um, you know, it's got to start going the other way now. I don't know why I have to do everything every time they win. It's got to go the other way now. Like, they should start getting tattoos. Would you guys get tattoos? I'll get tattoos. Oh. You was going to get a tattoo. Get one with yeah, I was going to get one, actually, but I wasn't allowed. Yeah. Was when you beat Verstappen, get one. A what? When you beat Verstappen, you get one. I thought you said one. <laughs> 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 Trainer was worried about because um, you got to kind of cover them up, and then there was some sweating injuries and all this and like that. But they barely break a sweat in a race car. Just sitting there. Woo! So, um, a lot goes into preparing for a race. I guess nothing sit in a race car. But I'm going to start with Oscar. Tell us a little bit about your pre-race ritual. What does it take? to prepare, you know, physically and mentally, and then I'll go to Don't mention the beer. No, I mean, I, I think for both of us, we're pretty relaxed before the race. We don't do anything, you know, we don't um, talk to our God or uh, 
Uh, Lucas subverted it already, and we just, I mean, I think you get a massage, I know they just have a, a, a quick warm up um, before the race, and uh, that's it. Normally, I think for all of us, we try to get into a, into a routine, um, so we normally we'll do the same thing before each race, so for me, each session, the same warm up. Um, so uh, everyone just finds what works best for them, and that's pretty much it. If it's hot, then maybe we'll have a nice bath, like Singapore last, last race out. Um, but, Special. Yeah, they're too special. Are you superstitious? I'm not, no. I always like to get the car from the left, purely because <laughs> I find it more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to get as comfy as I can before I jump in the car, so um, I, if I have to get it from the other side, then I will, but um, if it's an option, I'll always get it from the left. Awesome. Lando, yeah, no, what about you? Um, I free, I free stuff. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know about. Um, like I was, I just get a massage. Sometimes I love a little nap. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a really country music for. And a bit of country. I normally have my speaker, uh -huh. but as loud as you can possibly do it. Yeah. So it's probably disturbing Oscar's warm up. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be singing, and I'm in the middle of time. So uh, I, I honestly, I don't have. That is my thing. Is it's kind of just actually being quite relaxed. Um, you see a lot of people do quite a bit of like activity and trying to get quite pumped up for the race, but uh, for me, the more to actually just chill I can be, the better. So, a um, bit of stretching, just making sure um, I'm ready to get in the car. But otherwise, I don't do a lot. It's um, just kind of staying quite chilled and relaxed and uh, peaceful, apart from the loud music. And, uh, that's it. So, I, I don't have my thing, and then I give a little fist bump to my mechanics. Again, not superstitious. But uh, I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they both said no, we're not superstitious, but I get it. That's awesome. Yep. So, um, as a leader, uh, preparation is huge. And you're in a situation now where you are preparing as the leading team versus the team chasing. So tell us about that. Do you do things differently? How do you motivate the team? What is going through your mind and your process being in this situation? Uh, first thing you have to do is stay very humble, which is very hard for me to do. <laughs> uh, because this sport moves fast. Uh, and we have a lot of races left, so you know we have a lot of people coming up to us saying, oh, you've got this clinched already, and it's far from the case. I think what's important is you don't change what you're doing, what's working. It is a little bit different being uh, hunted versus being uh, the hunter. We uh, have no shortage of our competitors um, pointing to various things on our uh, racing car. Uh, that's the nature of the the, uh, the beast, so to speak, but just keep doing what we're doing, bringing uh, development every weekend. We have development this weekend, but the four top teams, there's nothing between the four of us at this point. I think our secret weapon, which uh, they can't replace, is our two drivers. Uh, yeah. The racing team has done a fantastic job, as have all 1,300 people. Uh, at, at McLaren, so we just keep doing what we're doing. Um, it's working, we're now I think 14, 15 podiums in a row. Our record is 19, but who's counting? Uh, and uh, you know, we've got them nicely, but it can move on you pretty, pretty quick. So uh, we're kind of counting down the races. We have to do sprint races. So we have the equivalent of about seven races of, of points. Spread like, this weekend. Spread this weekend. So that, that's a lot of racing. Yeah. Course, you know, a uh, third quarter of the season. So um, I think we'll be competitive everywhere, but it's going to be a great show for the fans. I think I'm as well. Awesome drivers, obviously, but you know, what is different about this year? Uh, a lot of little things, uh, and that's what build up uh, to, to having a successful season. Ultimately, it's aerodynamics is a critical part, uh, which you play a big role in uh, when uh, we gave you the near impossible task of uh, upgrading our whole uh, 
uh, CFD uh, cluster. You did it uh, in just in time for the cost cap. Uh, so that was, uh, was a miracle. So thank you for that because that has contributed a tremendous amount in the wind tunnel, uh, our new simulator. So we've uh, invested a lot in our infrastructure. Uh, the team is working uh, so well. The, the morale is, is awesome. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of small incremental gains. The whole field is covered by 2%. So if you think about all the industries in the world, 2%. If you're at the top of that, you're the best in the world. And if you're at the bottom of that, you're the worst in the world of Formula One. Yeah. And uh, it changes changes quickly. You know, I think at the start of the year, we thought Max was going to win every race. And now he's not one in six, seven, eight. <laughs> the car for us um, and it's unique like every kind of corner angle you have whether it's banked or up a hill or down a hill uh, creates different challenges so I think that's something about here in Suzuka I love um, and Silverstone just and again similar to here the high speed nature of it um, you kind of really feel what a Formula 1 car so can, can do around here so um, those three somehow mix together that's awesome uh, for myself, it's a similar combination of tracks, uh, Silverstone, Suzuka and Spa. Spa is my favourite track of the year, um, for very similar reasons, I really like Spa for the elevation change and the flowing layout, um, Silverstone and Suzuka for the uh, really high speed technical sections, so um, probably those, I mean Austin does have, I mean I've spoken about elevation change, but Austin definitely has the most into Turn 1, I think Turn 1 is probably one of the most unique corners of the whole year. Um, but if I can choose a combination of a few tracks, it'd be Silverstone, Suzuka, and Spa. Woo! Nice. Right. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I love Austin. We were the first team to win in 2012 when wow. Formula One came back to the States. Wow. Um, it's a very difficult track. I was fortunate to drive with Mario Andretti uh, last year, which was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, then I would go for a track that's not on the schedule, which is Le Mans, uh, which is a fantastic, uh, very long, very fast circuit. And then I'd love to line up with guardrails like Monte Carlo, and uh, <laughs> that'd be pretty exciting. Get <laughs> some spice in there, right? Yeah, have some fun. Winston, thank you very much. Great question. Hey guys, uh, if you could take any McLaren car, anyone, on a road trip anywhere in the world, which car would you take and where would you go? Uh, I would take a speed tail because wherever I'm going, I'd get there really fast. <laughs> uh, 
uh, it's a three-seater. You sit in the middle. It's very comfortable. It goes about 250 miles an hour. Uh, stereo is great. <laughs> so I, that would be a, a cool car. Where would I go? I, I, I go to a baseball game. I'm a baseball guy. It's a good football weekend. Um, but I could not go to the St. Louis Cardinals Stadium. <laughs> I do have a yeah, yeah. big baseball guy. Uh, and St. Louis Cardinals are my team. And why? I have no idea because I'm not from St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't see my throwing my hat earlier because I'm embarrassed. Um, that's, that's awesome. I have a question for you all. Um, as a driver, is there anything that never gets old? Kids in the audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, mean, I think just the sensation of driving so fast, um, you know, it's, it's impossible to put into words what driving a different car feels like. Um, I'm not even going to bother to try it, but um, that is the thing that never gets old, you know, whether you're... Okay, it's always more fun when you're leading or at the front, but whether you're coming last or first, the sensation of being in a car that is, you know, one of the quickest cars in the world, um, that part never gets old. So that's, that's the part of my range. That's awesome. Lando. Yeah. Same question. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> The thing, the thing, the, the thing that I probably enjoy the most every time, um, and uh, actually, it's not driving the car. It's the, it's the bit after, which is um, which is the, the the celebration of the team. For me, this is actually the thing which, because um, I think when you win a hundred races, one day, when I win. <laughs> Like, if I were a hundred, hundred and one, man. <laughs> like, that's, no, I think you'll get a little bit more of that. Um, I think, but I think the thing that remains uh, special the whole time is the actual feeling of then um, celebrating it with the team. Uh, I think that's like, for, for me, the coolest thing. Like, even when I'm up, when we're up on the podium, for me, the, the, the thing I love the most is not the fact that I'm there, it's that when we have and Zach or Andrea or Ben Barnsey, um, when we have the team there, the team up below, like for me, it's the thing that, uh, that I enjoy the most every time. So, um, yeah. It's like Dre and Champagne. Yeah, yeah. I just love the yeah. champagne. Epic yeah. champagne. But it's the most exciting part of the Formula One race. Tell us. I think there's two. The start. Mm -hmm. I think the start. Yeah. And actually, pit stop because it can all go really well. You go 1.8 second pit stop like we did, have a world record. And you can get it wrong, but it's, it's a high adrenaline moment, and, and also just watching the whole team come together uh, to change four tires. Drivers have to stop perfectly. Uh, sometimes they do. Um, <laughs> and to see the whole team come together, and, and that's where a lot of the strategy uh, comes in, and where you can make some some uh, ground in the, in the race. So those are, to me, are the two biggest adrenaline moments in the in a Grand Prix. That's awesome. That's that's very, I've never seen you as excited for a pit stop as I have seen him when one of us wins. The King of Collectibles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do y'all know the show? Yeah. All right, okay. Do you want to know that I like the sports memory? Ah, that's right. So it's a, uh, uh, sorry, what's that? Not too long ago. Okay, awesome. King of Collectibles. I really like it. Oscar. Uh, I'm in the middle of binge watching Prison Break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize what I was signing up for when I first watched it. <laughs> <laughs> 
how many episodes there are, but it's been uh, <laughs> how can you be in the middle of binge watching? Well, you know, it's a couple of seasons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Y